whoa, 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 whoa. Turn it off. Turn it off, guys. We're not doing this today, okay? Yeah, so the markets took a little bit of a hit. What are you going to do? Bitcoin down 4%, okay? So we had the news come out about the ETFs. Guys, it's crypto. I don't know if you remember how these things work when Bitcoin has a 15% increase in a week. It's not uncommon to see a 4% dip right after that, regardless of the news or not. Come on, guys. Thought you were crypto veterans out there. Let's dive in and have a little bit. But before that, I have to start it off nice and proper. What's going on, guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Shout out to everyone that's been liking, subscribing, and commenting. So we had a look at the markets. Bitcoin sitting just below 8000 Actually, it's sitting a little lower than that since I looked before, around 78. If we look at the biggest gainers of the day, we do have VeChain up 17.4%. I will go into why I think this has been been on such a tear lately. We'll get into that. We have Metaverse, ETP, Chainlink, Binance, could be because of the voting that's going on right now, Buybox, Token, Tesos, KuCoin shares, and of course, Tether. <gasps> What's this? Tether's going for 99 cents. Go on, oh, idiot. Get back in there at once and sell, sell. Arbitrage, arbitrage, buy, sell, buy, buy 99 cents, sell a dollar. No, just kidding, guys. So moving on, what do we have? Oh, and another thing too is we have Bitcoin dominance sitting at 47%. So yeah, that's been happening. <laughs> so, okay, the big news of the day. The Winklevoss Twins Bitcoin ETF application rejected by the SEC. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? So this isn't the first time that uh, Winklevoss twins have proposed a Bitcoin ETF, and this is the second time that it has been rejected. So this isn't really anything particularly new, guys. I mean, if you come down here, you know, they go into some of the reasons. So I've just highlighted this one paragraph. They say, rather, the commission is disapproving this proposal rule change because BZX has not met its burden under the Exchange Act and the commission's rule of practice to demonstrate that its proposal is consistent with the requirements of the Exchange Act. In particular, the requirement that its rules be designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices, which is really, really interesting because we just had 97% of the public supporting the Bitcoin ETF request. Everyone was talking about it. The SEC, they had a decision to ask the public about their thoughts on the CBOE. Now, this isn't the Winkle uh, Vosses. This is a different one. This was the CBOE Bitcoin ETF request, and they said that they saw an outstanding amount of support for the project, over 97% of commenters had shown interest in it and the SEC's final decision still has to yet to come on that one into December but on the current one that we're speaking of you know some people were saying you know for example you have this particular user saying yeah they're not letting the Winklevi uh, twins run the show I always say that because of the movie for sure even Mike Novogratz implied the big boys won't get into custody unless it's a huge company behind it which is why Coinbase's custody isn't really pulling in the mu that much money right it will be when Fidel Fidelity or JP Morgan or someone huge offers custody that the big boys will play. They go on to say, I think you guys are right. I think the CBOE will get approved for the ETF. So we do have a bit of a heroine speaking out on our behalf, guys. And no, I'm not talking about that kind of heroine. I'm talking about the heroic kind, which is SEC Commissioner uh, Hester Pierce. So basically she dissents. Okay. So commissioner Pierce's choice of alliteration in her recent tweet, ripe, respectable, and regulated stands in pretty stark contrast to representative Brad Sherman's favorite trio of crypto related terms, trafficking, terrorism, and tax evasion, which we'll get to the tweet in a second. But she says that there were three concerns. The first was that the proposed rule change does in fact satisfy the requirements of exchange act section six B five. So that's the first thing to notice. Okay. The second is the disapproval orders inhibits institutionalization. And she also feels that the disapproval order stifles innovation. I think we feel basically exactly the same way. So to highlight some of the key things, she says, I am concerned that the commissioner's approach undermines investor protection by precluding greater institutionalization of the Bitcoin market, more institutional participation would ameliorate many of the commission's concerns with the Bitcoin market that underlie its disapproval order. More generally, the commission's interpretation and application of the statutory standards sends a strong signal that innovation is unwelcome in our markets, a signal that may have effect far beyond the fate of Bitcoin ETFs. So basically saying that by not promoting the institutionalization of the Bitcoin market, the SEC is essentially preventing it from solving the very concerns that they point 
to their disapproval in the first place, correct? So that's just saying that. She also says many investors have expressed an interest in gaining exposure to Bitcoin and a subset of these investors would prefer to gain exposure without owning Bitcoin directly. So if you want to actually see the official dissent, you can come over here. It's actually at sec.gov. I could drop this here. You know, here's the actual full letter and then it goes on to explain everything else. And then we do have the tweet that's kind of going viral. She says, apparently Bitcoin is not ripe enough, respectable enough or regulated enough to be worthy of our markets. I dissent. I'm going to give this a live like and a retweet. So you guys can go check that out. Also, I thought this was really interesting. So scrolling down, so you have this guy, uh, Steve Koch right here. And basically he says, hopefully the SEC starts to make more informed and educated decisions soon. Accredited investors such as myself are already leaving the US and taking our funds to more open countries that embrace innovation. So you see, that's exactly what I was saying. If they don't want to do it here, they're going to do it somewhere else. These investors that want to get involved, these ETFs, whether or not they choose to spring up in the US or not, they're going to happen. That Maybe they'll happen in Malta. Maybe Binance will set one up. You know, I don't know. Maybe you'll see something happen in Switzerland, you know, because they're really blockchain friendly or I forget who that other uh, Joseph Lubin was saying. There was another one. There's all these different countries, all these different places that are definitely looking into this. So the other thing I wanted to point out was that so one of their arguments is no ETF tether manipulation, right? So that's a big thing, right? Tether prints money, you know, and you see people saying it's manipulated. But yet this person points out here's a list of banks and other financial institutions that have manipulated Forex and USD time and time again. And here's all the sites right here. I'll leave it in the description. You have Citibank fined 100 million for interest rate manipulation, JP Morgan to pay $65 million fine for dollar benchmark manip manipulation. You have the Rabo Bank manipulating US dollars and, and, and Libra rates, the Deutsche bank to pay 220 million to u.s senate it's a, here you go guys royal bank of scotland manipulating forex swaps oh wait Citibank again these institutions which have indulged in manipulation are most often given a slap on the wrist warning and that's pretty much it you know they're basically allowed to do whatever they want. If they screw up their, their finances, right? What do they do? We bail them out, okay? But yet in the meantime, this is what we're seeing happening in crypto. So I just wanted to kind of point that out, just kind of look at the broad spectrum. I personally think that eventually the US will have an ETF. I think that the Winklevoss's ETF kind of getting sprung upon them so quickly when they just said, hold on, chill out. You know, we're not too sure about the CBOE. We're gonna wait until later on this year. I think it was just too much at once. So I'm not surprised that this happened. I'm not shocked that this happened. And I don't think that this is anywhere near remotely the kind of FUD that we've seen in the past when it comes to crypto. I think it's just a combination of things happening. I really wouldn't worry too much about the decrease in percentage. You know what I'm saying? So that being said, it's just crypto, guys. It goes up, it goes down. So I wanted to talk about, we're talking about manipulation. So there's a lot of buzz going around about this Binance vote saying there's all kind of manipulation. You have Libra credit, uh, Binance vote manipulation activity. So you have this from Julie Fernandez. She's claiming that there's all this uh, manipulation activity going on for that. Then there's this other article that came out saying that Mithril is having their you know, illegal voting. Then he says, I'm going to expose the cheaters. Then this article goes in to explain all this. Now, this is basically all these people just saying that all these coins are, are you know, manipulating the voting system. So <clears throat> you did have CZ came out and he said, vote manipulation will be dealt with strictly. So we're not pointing fingers at anybody. I don't know who got vote. I mean, even remember back in the day, unfortunately, Alastos, you know, they were having some voting manipulation. So not to, to say it's their fault, but even sometimes the community tries to do something good and then it turns out to kind of bite them, you know, in the rear. So um, I thought this is actually really funny. Look at this. So somebody wrote, uh, is this a good tip to have? <laughs> Pre-tip amount, 8133, tip. Buy Bitcoin, total amount, 8133. So then this person goes, depends on the date, right? So if you told them to buy Bitcoin in uh, you know January, December, well, so that's kind of getting off topic, but let's get back on to Binance. So I'll give it a quick refresh. Uh, wow, it looks like it's pretty damn neck and neck between NKN and Mithril. So we have roughly 33%. So it's going to be a tough one, guys, for sure. We are seeing a lot of the support for NKN come out specifically. You know, we had Crypto Lark. He just did an interview with Bruce. Um, let's let me go back on this one. Yeah, we also had uh, Blockchain Brad. He also had a chance to catch up with Bruce as well. Um, Chico Crypto, he just did a breaking down the blockchain uh, 
for NKN as well. You have Mr. Dahong Fei himself supporting the NKN. And, you know, personally, guys, I, I, I'm a fan of NKN myself, so I, I, I did vote NKN, just being transparent. I really like the project. But that being said, guys, we do have uh, Binance doing a 100 million VTHO airdrop for VChain holders that now have the VET VChain Thor token. So, you know, not going to say leave your tokens on an exchange, but if you leave your tokens on Binance, they're going to equally distribute this among all users. Users. As you can see right here, it's 100 million VTHO, literally equally split, equal percentage among everyone. So, you know, I'm not telling you to leave it on, but I'm saying maybe you might want to leave it on to get the free airdrop. And then this kind of alludes me to why I think VChain may have had that insane spike we had yesterday. I mean, we went from $1.99 all the way to a high of $1.67, or if you want to do it in Satoshis, it was 32,500 Satoshis, which was... It, well, I don't know if it was an all-time high, but yeah, no, it's nowhere near the all-time high, but it was a hell of a spike recently, so that's what we've seen. So also, I want to talk to you while we're on the same kind of, bi we've just talked about Binance. So Binance also, they say they've officially completed the ontology mainnet swap, so for anybody out there that has their ontology, you can do that. Also, the other thing I want to point out is that if you were holding your NEO on the Neon Exchange wallet, remember you got your distribution, but it was only half? Well, you should be eligible for that second distribution upcoming. I'm not sure if it's available right now, but you're going to have to do it through their app. So as soon as I figure out more details, I'll let you know. However, if anybody knows details on that right now, please drop a drop a comment in the description so, so you can help everybody else out because that would really be very beneficial for all of us. So also, let's talk about Twitter. So you know Twitter's been overrun with these Ethereum bots, right? You know, send me one ETH, I'll send you back 10, right? So it says Twitter combats scam bots by blocking anyone using Elon Musk's name. So start, right? You gotta start somewhere, guys. So as of right now, <laughs> Elon Musk is, is free of the ETH giveaways. For the rest of us, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. So moving on to some other crypto news, we have the developer policies of Google Play Store have completely prohibited the cryptocurrency mining apps which supposedly feature disruptive ads, whatever that means. So it says, amidst the stringent measure, measures, the company has still considered giving permission to those apps which focus on remotely handling crypto mining. Oh, finally, we can all take a sigh of relief. Guys, Electronium is still available on the Google App Store. <laughs> Moving on. So <clears throat> we have heard about, you know, Tron has been in the news for a number of different developments, but nothing beats the hype that was created around the acquisition of BitTorrent. However, kind of in line with my previous story, soon rumors surrounding BitTorrent to be mining crypto have started doing its rounds, which they replied, we wish to reiterate that BitTorrent has no plans to change what we do or change for the service we provide. The acquisition will not dramatically affect the platform. BitTorrent confirmed, they stated, we believe our vision of democratizing the web by enabling decentralized, resilient access to information remains as relevant as it was when we started. So that's what they had to say about that. We also have this little bit of adoption that came out of the Daily Hodl. So you have Tokyo-based tech giant Hitachi and telecom operator KDDI are testing biometric blockchain-based system to settle retail payments. Using Hitachi's blockchain built on the Hyperledger Fabric platform, the biometric verification system is designed to integrate KDDI's coupon system, allowing customers with coupons to validate in-store purchases using their fingerprints only. The comp Here's the funny part, though. The companies are running a trial in Tokyo's Shinjuku district, and their primary place is at a Mr. Donut local, local donut shop. I'm not, I'm not making this up, guys. Literally at a Mr. Donut local donut shop. But hey, guys, you know, you got to start somewhere. You got to start small. So Mr. Donut or not, hey... You know, let's 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 get on the blockchain. Let's do it. So here's an article that I'm not going to go into, but I am going to drop it in the link in the description because you do have to wonder, you know, is Bitmain, you know, mining coins secretly? Is that even possible? Granted, everything is on, you know, the, the public distributed ledger. I'm not too sure. This uh, person on Medium, Hakane, seems to think so. He's science, blockchain, and life. That's his motto. So... 
yeah, I'll drop this in the description, guys. You guys can have a look at that. I don't really know too much about that, but you do have to wonder, these guys that have all this power and all this mining equipment, you know, are they kind of doing some other stuff in the background? Because they were talking about their whole transparency and, um, you know, they, they were preventing people from hoarding or, or doing things in secrecy. So I'll drop that in the description as well. And guys, if you think that this 4% drop is bad, I have to once again reiterate what Rand Nooner said. He said, dear Facebook holders, now you know what crypto holders go through every three months. We use a term called HODL, though I'm not sure that applies in your case. And I don't know if you guys saw this at all, but Facebook literally lost the equivalent of the entire market cap of Bitcoin. Can you, can you imagine that? So I want you to really, once again, putting in putting crypto into perspective, letting everybody realize just how small this is, just how early this is, and just how lucky you are to be here. Remember that. Always be thankful because you're very early in this game. And if that's not enough to cheer you up today, we can always just look at the I am a time traveler from the future here to beg you to stop what you're doing post that came out on our Bitcoin four years ago. Classic story. Although it's funny though, because people used to think it was serious, but as you start to look into it now, you know, for example, he's, uh, this person says $10,000 in 2017. Well, we know that it actually rose to 20,000 and there's a few other things in here now that, you know, as time is playing off, you realize that, you know, either, either this is a total joke, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it is, or like, you know, maybe we've changed the future. Like, I don't know. So that being said, guys, it's a joke. Obviously, we're just having fun. I know it's tough. It's Friday. Relax. It's, it's a beautiful day out in New York. I'm going to go get some sunshine after this. So just chill, guys. Have a good time. It's just another day in crypto. You know I love you guys. Everyone that's been smashing on the like button, everyone that's been dropping me a comment, everybody that's been hitting that subscribe button, hitting the bell notifications, joining the Telegram chat. I don't have to tell you how much I appreciate everything. You guys are awesome. That being said, my name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.